Hi, I'm James Sims and I'm representing Cielo Tolindo, a senior living facility just north of San Miguel de Allende here in Mexico. I'm in this lovely courtyard of a friend's house in the Colonial San Antonio neighborhood of San Miguel. Now before I go further, let me ask your forgiveness because you're going to hear the periodic cacophony of dogs barking, roosters crowing, fireworks, motorcycles, church bells, you name it. It's all part of the ambiance of a Mexican city. One of the things caregivers express a little anxiety and uncertainty about is the admission process. This makes a lot of sense because it has to be one of the most intimidating and emotionally charged things that you will ever undertake. And secondly, it's occurring far away from home, so it's not like you'll just go back to your house to pick up some papers. Recognizing this, I produced a detailed admission agenda that will provide to families as they prepare to bring their loved one in for admission. And secondly, I thought it might be helpful if I put this small video together, again, to help alleviate some of the anxiety about this process. But most importantly, and I can't stress this enough, the staff here are so wonderful to work with. They're accommodating and understanding and helpful in a way that make the process so much easier than it might otherwise have been. Before I get into the admission agenda, let's talk about the sort of personal things that you would most likely bring with your loved one as part of getting them situated through the admission process. And I would break this into two categories of needs, functional and emotional, where emotional would include things that provide comfort and continuity. Things like framed photos and photo albums, favorite books, sentimental objects like figurines or a handmade quilt or pillow. Uh, whatever that might give them comfort through familiarity. Uh, as a aside, uh, my wife was quite young when she was admitted with early onset Alzheimer's and was quite active in social media. Um, I had a service produce a, a bound set of books, one for each of her last five years of Facebook so that she could flip through those and uh, enjoy a retrospect. When I think about functional, I would further break that into clothing, personal care, and possibly living space. Clothing should be simple to care for items, in other words, nothing too fancy or requiring special care like dry cleaning. And clothing should provide comfort and mobility, ease of dressing, uh, enable the ability to layer so that you can be comfortable in an arid climate that ranges from 50 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. and. Um, just know that you'll have some things that will wear out, get broken, or lost and require uh, replenishment more often. These are things like underclothes and shoes and eyeglasses. Personal care includes all the usual hygiene things like toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, body lotion, hairbrush, and so on. And living space items would not really necessarily happen as part of the admission process because you probably make some choices once getting settled into uh, your loved one's room and determining if they might need a side table or a reading chair and light or some sort of decor items and that's really very subjective and uh, relative to the room and how it's furnished. Now I'd like to go over the agenda for admission, and this will help you understand what else you need to prepare for and bring, and also what that day of admission will look like. It will begin introductions between the lead staff, yourself, and your loved one. And at this time, we'll receive personal belongings, and those will go through an inventory process. Then there'll be a walkthrough tour, and you can see your loved one's room. And uh, then we'll get into more detail with beginning with an interview with the doctor and at this time you can provide medical history and prescriptions uh, if you have a doctor's letter prescribing a particular care uh, and you would also turn over medications prescribed and over-the-counter and also any vitamins or supplements and the doctor would likely conduct a preliminary, a preliminary checkup or assessment and this provides the doctor and the loved one to begin to get familiar. 
and then there'd be an interview with a psychologist and the, this is where you would provide a brief biography of your loved one if you um, chose to undertake that but you would definitely complete some questionnaires and the psychologist would have their preliminary interaction and this would provide them the chance to get familiar with uh, your loved one and your loved one familiar with them. At this point, most likely your loved one would go off with the staff and perhaps have a meal or participate in activities or um, enjoy the sunshine or the gardens or their room. And we would move into the um, administrative offices to complete some legal and financial details. This is the time that you would provide your power of attorney and health care directive, uh, your loved one's passport and six month tourist visa. You'd enable a copy of your uh, passport, provide a brief outline of your loved one's habits, customs, and behaviors, um, review and execute the services contract, and this might take one to two hours just to go over that and ask you all of your questions and to execute that. And then write checks for um, admission and perhaps uh, several months going forward, up to six months post-dated. And you'd also establish a petty cash fund for um, additional services or consumables. For instance, you might wish to establish a petty cash fund for your loved one to be able to go over to the cafe and have meals two or three times a week and have flowers in their room and to get produce from the farmer's market and uh, maybe they have specific consumables that they require and that would all come out of the petty cash fund. And the last step would be working with a psychologist and the doctor to determine the best plan for separation. In some cases it might be uh, ideal for you to just go because it would prolong uh, painful separation and other times it may be better to do a gradual separation where you come back uh, subsequent days for shorter and shorter visits. In all, I hope this information is both useful and helps to relieve any uncertainty or concerns you might have. The process really is surprisingly smooth and easy. If you have any questions, you can contact me anytime. Contact information is on our web at www.cialitolindoseniorliving.com. Thank you very much.